Hi everyone. In a previous video, I showed how to analyze, decompile, and reverse engineer string obfuscation methods from Phoenix Miner using IDA. After a few evenings, I'm happy to show that I found what I was looking for. So first off, here's the list of strings that I deobfuscated. To generate these strings, rather than manually transcoding like I showed in the previous video, I built some Python tools that could read the Windows clipboard and do most of the transcoding for me. There's a whole bunch of strings here, but the ones that we're interested in start with minor underscore. These are JSON API uh, calls. And there's also, down, down a little lower, some, some handy strings like unable to parse CDM requests, unable to start CDM server, and listening for CDM remote manager at gobble. So let's switch over to item. Uh, in here, I've already renamed the relevant functions and data. In total, I identified around 140 string deobfuscation functions, some of which are just shims that rearrange arguments and call the functions that actually do the work. So to track down the JSON API implementation, I started by narrowing my search in two different directions. First, I, I started with the system call listen. This is used for setting up a TCP server socket for listening. Uh, and I figured there were, wouldn't be too many places this is called since there's only a handful of ports opened by the miner itself. And uh, sure enough, we find, by, by using some of the strings in here, we can find that this is the, the one that starts the CDM API. And we know that because some of the error strings, like unable to start CDM server, occur when listen fails. But I had a lot of trouble tracking this all the way to the JSON API. So the other approach that I used was finding the function JSON reader parse, uh, which is identified pretty easily in the source code by the string, a valid JSON document must be either an array or an object value. And this is reader parse. So we find that same string in our source code. For some reason, this was, wasn't obfuscated. And we can track that back and name it JSON reader parse. And from here, I identified all of the callers of JSON reader parse. Uh, there's actually just one, but then the three different, three or four different things called this. Uh, there's a couple of different routines that will try to figure out what's the most profitable thing to mine. This appears to be for the dev fee. Um, then there's our JSON RPC handler, and then another thing that hits the Stratum API, and then one more that I uh, didn't bother looking into because I was mostly interested in the JSON RPC API. So a, a quick word about how JSON CPP works is that you call parse on a JSON document and it builds something kind of like a document object model that you can query against. So you, you get back this, ob if, if the parse succeeds, you get back this object that's kind of like a big dictionary of all the JSON structure, uh, kind of like a dictionary array. And you can then say, hey, does this key exist in there? Yes, if so, uh, look it up, give me the data that, that is used there. So the way that we know this is the CDM API is that when parse fails, down here in the else case, we get the string unable to parse CDM request. And that gets sent out to the console and, and freed. So we're pretty sure this is process JSON RPC request. And these, these names are just things that I have made up to help me uh, remember where I am. The original function names probably have nothing to do with this other than you know, they'll probably have something to do with JSON and something to do with parse. Um, so the second parameter, uh, A2, is our uh, JSON document object model. And these little helper functions will take that and look up a string and try to uh, get, get some results out of it. This one's not, not 
exactly what we're interested in, but this guy will look up the string method and figure out the result of that method we get in this function I named the method. So a little further on, we take the method and we uh, dynamically co string compare. This is uh, just appears to be a string compare function for their particular type of string class. Uh, we compare the method with the decrypted string get stat one minor get stat one, which is our API call entry point, and. Uh, we get the result of that string compare, and if the string compare succeeded, we call get stat with uh, the parameter one. A little later, we call we check we decrypt the string get minor get stat two. String compare the method with get stat two, and uh, if it succeeds, we call get stat n with two. This implements uh, the get stat API for both one and two. Uh, control GPU is a little different. Control GPU will first check the read-only API mode. If you read the Phoenix Miner documentation, which I probably should have done before I started this, uh, CDM has three, three different modes that it can run in. And it can be completely disabled where they won't even open the port. It can be in read-only, which is the default, uh, but that nerfs a bunch of the APIs. Or it can be in mode 2, which is full uh, read-write mode. So if we go into check read-only API mode, uh, we go to this thing that is basically a handle to the HTTP server, and 272 words in, we find a variable, and if the variable equals 2, uh, we just return true, and uh, the function that called this processes it and goes. Otherwise, we decrypt the string command rejected CDM is in read only mode and print it out somehow and then free it. So that's how a uh, read only checked API works. Um, if this check had passed we would then decrypt the string params and uh, look it up in the JSON document, document object and get some results out of that, and keep going. Uh, I'm not here to talk about the details of each API. What I'm more curious about is the specific APIs. Uh, what's available, and if there's anything new that's been added to Phoenix Miner that hasn't been documented yet. Uh, spoiler alert, there, there isn't. Uh, the, only, the only new thing seems to be the read-only API mode, which is a great idea. Uh, so we have some more uh, some more methods, um, minor restart, minor reboot is in there twice for some reason, I'm not sure why. Um, minor file, this is used to upload a file. And I think that's about it. So thanks for following along with me as we browse through the innards of Phoenix Miner. Um, hope you guys like and subscribe.